Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you again. Thank you that today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and we are reminded that Jesus Christ is the perfect Good Shepherd. Thank you that no matter where we go, he's always beside us, and he leads us beside still waters. He leads us to green pastures, and he walks with us all the days of our life. Father, we offer you this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. We gather in worship. Come, risen Christ, and restore us. Come, Lord, and restore your people. Come, Lord, and protect your people. Come, Jesus Christ, and shepherd your people. Come, Holy Spirit, and strengthen your people. Come, Holy Spirit, and anoint us. Restore us, O Holy Spirit. Amen. The lessons that are said today are from the back, book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 to 12, Psalm 23, 1 John 3, 16 to 24, and the gospel is from St. John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, reading from verses 11 to 18. Glory to Christ our Savior. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep then. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one take it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Savior. Pray the collect together. Good Shepherd, you reveal your love for all and call them by name. Grant that all who hear your voice may follow where you lead, for you live and reign in the unity of the blessed Trinity, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. A Sunday school teacher asked her class if they knew where the Lord lived. One little boy put up his hand and said, He lives in our bathroom. She asked him why he thought that, and he replied, Well, every Sunday morning, my dad bangs on the bathroom door and says, Good Lord, are you still in there? Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and Psalm 23, along with John 3.16, is perhaps one of the most well-known Bible scriptures. I've met people in many different situations, and uh, people who are dying, 
people in old age homes, those struggling to cope with loss, those who have been diagnosed with a terminal illness, those who struggle with Alzheimer's or dementias. The one thing they all have in common is they are able to repeat the first line of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Many say it in times of great difficulty or pain or anxiety. I'm always surprised that people who don't even remember the names of their children, sometimes not even the name of their partners, can still say, the Lord is my shepherd. I wonder if the power of the psalm is because of the honesty of its words. It doesn't paint a picture of a perfect world devoid of pain and suffering. At the very heart of the psalm is an acknowledgement of the dark valleys in our lives and the enemies, both physical and spiritual, that we face. God's care for us does not mean that we live in a paradise devoid of all troubles. Instead, Psalm 23 confesses that even in the midst of such difficulties, God remains with us. So who is the shepherd and why is he described as good? This is the fourth of the I am statements that Jesus makes. When we read the Gospel of St. John, we see that Jesus is the good shepherd because he is the source of abundant life. First to the man born blind, giving him a new existence, a new life, making him a new creation, a child of God. Jesus is the good shepherd because he finds the man who is born blind after the blind man has been thrown out, which the disciples need to hear because they too will be thrown out and they need to remember this because Jesus also found them. Jesus is the good shepherd because he knows his sheep and he calls them by name. Remember Lazarus, Mary Magdalene. Jesus is the good shepherd because before he goes to the cross, he lays down his life by coming out of the garden, the sheepfold, leaving his sheep protected and safe in the garden and giving himself up for the sake of the disciples, his sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd because he will take up his life again in the resurrection and the ascension. They are our promise of abundant eternal life here and now and the promise of life in the future in that place that Jesus specially prepares for the ones he loves and who love him. Those are some of the reasons why Jesus is the Good Shepherd. John, 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 24 tells us Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is the ultimate picture of God's love for us, for all of us. 1 John 3, 17 says, How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, yet refuses to help. The answer comes, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. In these highly charged, difficult times, what does it truly look like to care for our neighbor? What does it look like to love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action? How do we care for one another? What are our obligations to each other? What does God desire for our lives? What does faith in action look like? How is God your shepherd? How does God call us to be a balm for the sick and a consoling presence to those who grieve? If we trust that God is our shepherd and that God's call for us is to walk alongside the sick, the broken and the grieving, only the love of our good shepherd and the infilling of his Holy Spirit will enable us to do this. I think that's perhaps what's been most difficult during this pandemic. We are not able to have funerals where we are able to mourn together Instead, we have to make choices about who can attend to keep the numbers down. We're not able to visit the sick and the dying in hospital. We are not able to give each other a much needed hug. 
It has also made people fearful. We see that in the low numbers at church. We need to remember, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I think we are safer coming to church than we are going to a supermarket. Christ risks all, even his life, for you. He knows you by name. You are his personal concern. He will take care of you. And like a hired hand, sheep owners treasure their flock and they treat them much, much better than they deserve. <laughs> because really, sheep are silly, easily frightened, and they easily lose their way. Lost lambs don't look pretty and white. They are scraggly, mud-caked and dirty. Jesus uses this image of the Good Shepherd to show us the extent to which he will go on our behalf. He will seek out and rescue the untidy, the unattractive, the messed up, the dirty, the lost, in order to bring them into his fold. Your Good Shepherd knows what makes you tick, knows your strengths and your weaknesses. In the Bible, to know someone means to know them in a deeply intimate, personal way. None of us are self-sufficient, as we think we are. We all have needs that Christ, our Good Shepherd, can meet. We also, like sheep, have a tendency to stray from or neglect what is best for us. Jesus uses the problems we can't handle on our own to draw us closer to him. Your good shepherd knows you better than you know yourself. He knows your unique weaknesses and your temptations that no one else knows. And he treasures you because you are unique. To outsiders, sheep all look the same, but not so to their shepherds who love and treasure them. To our Good Shepherd, we are unique, we are individual. Jesus promises us that no matter what, he will never abandon us. He never grows tired of helping us when we desperately need his help. He never grows tired of forgiving us when we plead for his mercy. Our Good Shepherd Let's no greater and challenges burden come and burdens come our way than he knows we can handle with his help. Life's tough circumstances are easier to bear when we share them with a loving shepherd. Forgiveness means that Jesus focuses on your potential for the future, on all the wonderful things you can still do for him rather than on your past failures. Because of this, Jesus continues to inspire and motivate millions of Christians all over the world to give their lives to serve him fully. I know my own, and my own know me, Jesus says. We get to know Jesus by listening to his word. Sheep are known for their acute hearing. They can pick up and respond positively to their master's voice when there are dozens of other shepherds speaking at the same time. Wise sheep keep within earshot of their master's voice. God created us with two ears and one mouth because we should listen twice as much as we speak. Be keen to listen and slow to speak, the Bible says. When we listen, we learn. And Jesus says, learn from me. His words seek to transform our hearts and our minds, our thoughts and our actions. Sunday by Sunday, Jesus has a message for you, tailor-made to your needs for the coming week. Even though we've been restricted to sermons of only 10 minutes, still we can hear his voice in that time. Jesus can do wonderful things for those who spend time with him every day. The more time we spend with him, the deeper and the sweeter and the richer our relationship with him becomes. We call him good because he continues caring for us even when we forget about him. The nearer you draw to Jesus, the less you think about yourself, 
than the more you think about others. On Sunday, I was reminded of a verse from Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When a group of ladies of St. Albans arrived at my home, and I felt that they prepared this beautiful table that overflowed with prayers and scripture and songs, and the sweet fragrance of Jesus Christ was spread abroad. One brought sunflowers, and I was reminded of my good son, Friday sermon. This is what I said. Sunflowers are helotropic flowers. They turn their face towards to follow the sun all the way across the sky because they feed and grow off of the sun. Our hearts and souls need to turn towards the face of God and open up to it and feed off of it. That's what God created us for, to be blessed with his presence and to experience the amazing pleasure and joy that that brings. I felt as though God had prepared me for the difficulties that lay ahead and was reminding me to stay close to him. Jesus is in the business of gathering those who have just drifted away from his fold. I have other sheep who do not belong to this fold. I will bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. Let others know how good your Savior has been to you. The story of his goodness to you has just begun, because surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, because he's a good, good God and a good shepherd. Psalm 23 of the Passion Bible ends like this. So why should I fear the future? For your goodness and your love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterwards, when my life is through, I return to your glorious presence to be forevermore with you. Amen. I want to tell you a story. Some years ago, a famous actor was giving an after-dinner speech and he asked the audience if there was a famous poem they would like him to recite. And there was a silence and eventually an old vicar raised his hand and said, Psalm 23, please. And the actor agreed on one condition, that the clergyman would also recite the psalm after he'd finished. The clergyman reluctantly agreed. The actor rec recited Psalm 23 and received a tumultuous applause. The old man then recited Psalm 23 and there was not a dry eye in the place. At the end, the actor stood up and said, do you know the difference between my version of Psalm 23 and his? I know the psalm, but this man knows the shepherd. May the God who brought us peace by raising from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ so that he could be the great shepherd of his flock and by the power of the blood of the eternal covenant, may he work perfection in every part of you, giving you all that you need to fulfill your destiny. And may he express through you all that is excellent and pleasing to him through your life union with Jesus, the anointed one who is to receive all glory forever.